Hello and welcome to another demo. Uh, today I'm going to show you how the story engine and the deck of worlds can combine to create some really interesting settings and stories that are linked. Um, but first I wanted to give you a heads up that um, this is an actual production copy of the story engine. This is what the card quality and details will be like on the final run of the deck of worlds. And you'll notice that it's very different from the alpha. The alpha, I cut the corners myself with a corner puncher rounder. So these will have matching corners in the final production run. So let's start off by building ourselves a micro setting. Region card. Ooh, we've got a lake. Landmark card. Stone. Namesake card. A frogs that remembers rogue or poets. I like the poet stone. I like the lake of frogs. Ooh, but the lake that remembers. That's got a creepy feel to it. I, I love um, doing extra namesakes, so let's do an extra namesake. The beastly stone, the underground stone, the stone of pigs, the stone where no bird sings. Switch this to poet stone, the lake where no bird sings. One of the things that I like about the system is that it's so agile, it's very easy to um, go back and make your choices again, so you're not sort of bound by the first thing that you decide to do. Origin card, former home of famous writer, site of tragic death, found it as a memorial, and origin of famous children's book. Site of a tragic death, I like the idea that the birds don't sing out of, like, respect. Attribute card, busy nightlife, constantly rainy, values athleticism, and unique dialect. I like the idea that it's constantly rainy at the lake. An advent card. A discriminatory law is being hotly debated, or an assassination has disturbed the balance of power. You know, we already got a death here, so I think it'd be really interesting if there was like another death that happened recently that mirrored the first. We've got a big lake land area with a tragic death, um, with a bird, with no bird singing, it's constantly rainy, and assassination is disturbing the balance of power. Let's look at opportunities to fill in additional details with the story engine deck. The most common details that you'll want to fill in are either characters, whether it's a, uh, a leader or a founder or a person in the namesake that you can fill in. Sometimes you'll want to fill in additional objects or locations. If uh, one of the prompts has to do with, like, it's the hiding place of an artifact, you could draw artifacts from the anchor deck. Right now, I see um, two or even three characters that I'm really interested in. Um, the poet of the Poet Stone would be really interesting to learn more about. We could do that by drawing cards, uh, agent cards, or an agent-focused prompt from um, the Story Engine deck. Um, the tragic death that happened could also be really, really interesting, and it, it wouldn't surprise me if um, perhaps it was the poet who died. And then uh, recently there's been an assassination, so that could be a, a second or a third character, depending on how you want to count this, all of which we can create with the story engine deck. So who, who was this poet? I'm going to start by drawing an agent card from the story engine deck. We have an expert, a virtuoso, an academic a child prodigy. If we're dealing with tragedy, I might go with a virtuoso, someone who is really just above and beyond um, with their level of talent. So there's virtuoso. Aspect card, dramatic, revolutionary, gilded, misunderstood. Let's have them be a revolutionary virtuoso. They disturbed the status quo with the way that they wrote. I want to know more about what they wanted, so I'm going to draw an engine card from Story Engine deck wants to defeat or wants to find peace within or for. Let's do peace. Here's here's a, where you could do a couple of things. I could draw a card from the deck here and pull an anchor card. So the revolutionary virtuoso wants to find peace with a grave, a flower, a puzzle, or a church. Or I could what do what's called locking. It's a mechanic where you put a card face down, or sometimes you'll actually go through the deck and pick a card intentionally that you want to have representing um, an existing part of your story. So I could take, I could lock this anchor card and say that that actually represents the stone itself. Um, and say like this card is, uh, represents the stone and the ver this is the story connects to the stone somehow. And I might actually have it do both. I might say that the stone is a puzzle. I like the idea that there was this ancient stone near the lake that's been there since time immemorial and everyone knows and goes and visits there. Maybe it didn't have a name before. It was just known as the stone. This poet, this revolutionary poet, maybe they were having a hard time facing censorship and that was their struggle. Maybe they were having a hard time finding the words they wanted to say. Whatever they were struggling with, they were looking for peace in the form of 
a puzzle that they planned to carve into the stone itself. They came up with a riddle that they wrote down as a poem, their masterpiece, that they carved it into the stone itself and left that behind as a puzzle to be solved. Like perhaps no one actually knows what it is that the poem's referring to or describing or about. People will come to the poet's stone to read the poem and try and understand it and try and understand what, what the poet could be talking about. Conflict cards are a really fun part of the original story engine deck, but it will turn them into someone they never wanted to be but it will take them somewhere they never wanted to go. Ooh, I like that it'll take them somewhere never they wanted to go. The vibe I'm getting off this now is that um, maybe they actually didn't like the lake area. They're from a nearby area. The stone they wanted to get to because that's they, they thought that was the perfect place to carve their, their puzzle poem. To, in order to get there, they'd have to visit this Lakeland area that um, for whatever reason, they either have bad memories of or they've been afraid of. Maybe they're afraid of water or afraid of drowning. In order to complete their, to find peace, to like finally write their masterpiece and carve it into the stone, they would need to go to the lake area. And that's, uh, that's a different difficult, difficult place. And I'm wondering if maybe they did drown here, and that's the tragic death that happened. And the lore goes that birds don't sing in this area um, because, out of respect for the, the poet that was silenced. So that's an example of using Story Engine Deck to fill in spaces left in the story. This is the guidebook from the original um, story engine. So it is an eight-page book uh, that comes with a bunch of different sample prompts and styles, advice on using the deck, optional mechanics. This is where I explain how to lock the cards, uh, which I was talking about earlier. Examples on how to change a prompt. So these are different ways that you can workshop a prompt if you're stuck and it's not helping you. And we're going to have equivalent material for Deck of Worlds. Uh, we're going to have the simple prompts and how to create them, and then different ways to troubleshoot. And there will be a section either in the main guidebook or possibly in a free supplement that I'll make available as a free PDF, where it talks about um, a list of brainstorming questions for how to identify opportunities to explore your prompt deeper by pairing it with the story engine. Are there any notable deaths or births that are mentioned associated with your area? Who is the leader of your area and what do you know about them? Are there any objects, artifacts, or items of note? Do you want to create any additional location? Every anchor card does have some kind of location tagged on it as well, and you can use these as supplemental landmarks if you want. You can, use, you can pull cards from the aspect deck and use them as improvised namesakes. Let's uh, imagine for the lake I didn't want to go with where no bird sings, the cheery lake, the surprising lake, the besieged lake, or the cut rate lake. Cut rate lake sounds kind of fun. I like the, the musicality of those words. So you can always uh, use um, aspects as a secondary set of namesakes if you want to mix things up more. And alternatively, you can always draw an anchor card and add additional landmarks. So I could add a museum and tuck it under the lake and add that there, or an exhibit. Or, like I said, I could create an interesting artifact um, of note by tucking a necklace. So maybe someone lost a necklace in the lake. While we're improvising, I want to know what kind of necklace it was. Protected necklace. I like the idea that the necklace had an enchantment on it, which has stopped it from, you know, rusting in the lake. And so it's still down there and able to be retrieved. It's, a, it's an agile system. It's very fluid. There's lots of ways to uh, have it do what you want. With um, the deck of worlds, you're creating much bigger card stacks than you may have gotten used to if you've used the story engine before. Story engine, um, tucking is important to it, but generally speaking, you don't tuck more than five cards at a time. Here, you're going to be tucking larger clusters, so it, it does really help to have some kind of um, like tablecloth surface. I think the playmats are going to be actually very, very helpful for being able to handle the cards more easily. I recommend if you're planning to lar build a very large map, go with the simple location clusters. Complex location clusters are so much fun for exploring one area in depth. They're just a little bit harder to move around a world map. But let's keep going, because I could... We could try and figure out who the assassination was. Who was assassinated? A healer, a doctor, a therapist, or a peacekeeper? Ooh, I think a peacekeeper. That would really would disturb the balance of power. I'm going to draw two aspect cards this time. Damage to be really interesting. Like, they've been through trauma, and yet they still are, are pushing for peace, and they haven't let that change them. Oh, crude would also be interesting. They're a peacekeeper, but they're not necessarily like a diplomat. Um, the way that they keep peace is is just <laughs> by yelling at people, really honestly. I, I kind of like that idea. That would also explain why maybe they were they, they developed some enemies. So um, the assassination was of a famous crude peacekeeper. The more that I put this prompt together, the more I feel like this needs a neighboring area, because I already said that the poet, who I drew that second prompt of, I already said that the poet is not from this area. They don't like the lake. So they're probably from a neighboring area, especially if there's a balance of power being disturbed. There's probably some kind of tension with the neighboring area. So I want to learn more about the neighboring area. Desert. A landmark card. Oh, College of the Desert would be interesting. Namesake card of branches that moves builders or hidden. Desert of branches is interesting too. Like maybe there was a healthy forest, but it's been petrified. 
uh, as through like uh, the process of the desert becoming drier and drier. So there's still all these dead skeleton trees around. I kind of like that image. Origin card, uh, homeland of people in exile, discovered by accident, founded for military protection, or origin of a folk song. I like the homeland of people in exile, um, especially because it's going to make the relationship between these two areas really interesting. And I like, again, the idea that if the poet is afraid of the lake or afraid of water and they come from a desert area, it might be that um, there used to be like one uh, group of people living in the lake area, or maybe this whole continuous area used to be the same kind of like lake land. Some kind of schism happened and people uh, migrated to the desert area. Um, you ended up with two separate cultural groups at odds. It might be that the poet's struggle that uh, I was talking about earlier was to try and like reconcile those two groups uh, and they weren't able to do it uh, except through um, carving their thoughts into the, the stone. An attribute card. We got decorated doorways, beautiful winters, known for manufacturing or known for tea. I'm going to say that the college is known for manufacturing and I'm actually going to change the homeland of people in exile to be attached to the desert and like this. And now I think it's like a trade college, an advent card. Famine has struck. Terrible storm has decimated the area. Ooh, I like the idea of a terrible sandstorm um, that maybe tore down some of these ancient branches. Again, there's a couple things that I can do with um, uh, having this talk to the story engine. With regards to the manufacturing, if I want to know what they're manufacturing, that seems like a great opportunity, again, to bring in an object or an item, and I would use the anchor deck for that. Anytime you're trying to make the deck do something very specific with the prompts, you can do what I call like overdrawing or drafting, where you draw more cards than you need and you pick one. Three cards here and then pick the one that I think fits best. I like the idea that they manufacture works of art or furniture. Manufacturing names could be interesting. Like this is a college where, where they assign names to people. I'm kind of digging curses. Like maybe the college actually creates cursed objects for people. Um, and that's like their specialty. Especially with curses being so closely tied to language, that could be a reason for there to be a poet from this area. Now I have two neighboring areas, a desert of these petrified trees from the time where the desert was more like the lake area, but it has since been dried out. We've got um, a homeland of people in exile for where two groups split off from the lake area and someone have to live here. A terrible sandstorm happened recently, which has sort of torn down a lot of these petrified trees. And over in the lake area, an assassination of the peacekeeper who had been fighting for peace between um, these two groups is dead. And now it looks like a conflict could finally unfold. The lake I've already played around with, a necklace lost in the, middle, in the bottom of the lake with um, a protection on it. Ooh, this might be like a necklace that was designed to protect from curses. It could be really essential to how the conflict plays out. We still got our poet stone and the mystery there. But there's lots of ways that you could position how you want to write this story now. Um, you could go and do backstory by writing about the poet originally, try and learn more about the peacekeeper and why they died. Um, if we wanted to, we could do another full, full prompt about the peacekeeper with uh, an engine, an anchor, and a conflict to find out more about what happened to them and what they wanted in their goals. If I wanted to, I could decide that, well, if there is a conflict between these two groups, I should know who the leaders are and I could create a new leader for this group and a leader for this group using cards drawn from the story engine deck. And then I could pursue any, any one of those stories that I wanted to write about. Really, it just comes down to which areas of your world and which combinations of cards are talking to you and then where you want to go exploring the story. If you don't have the story engine deck and you're just going to have the deck of worlds, pay a lot of attention to the advent card, where conflict enters your world, and it's a great place to start a story from. If you look at pretty much any advent card and you ask yourself who would be willing to do something about it and what would it cost them to take action, that'll give you all the ingredients you need for a story. Um, so if an assassination has happened and there's about to be an imbalance of power and the areas might go to war again, who would step up and try and prevent that? Um, or who would step up and try and take advantage of it? A terrible storm has decimated the area. Who would try and repair the damage? Who would be willing to try and rally people to do that? All of these are really interesting points to have a short story take place, or it could be the start of a novel, um, or it could be the entry point for where um, a party of Dungeons & Dragons um, characters come in to, to get involved in a story. That uh, is a little bit of a look at how the story engine combines with Deck of Worlds, and thank you so much for watching.